Uh, yo, dope, legend, let's go. Things started shaky, but now it's just up only, right? <laughs> Fingers crossed. Awesome. Um, yeah, Clay, I guess if you wanted to narrate over this, we can uh, get started. Uh, sure. Um, well, we, the, the housekeeping um, has definitely um, taken a little bit longer than we expected. Um, but yeah, let's, let's click over into the next slide. Um, yeah. Uh, so... I think you read this quote, Clay. We can go to the next one if you'd like. Well, no, no, I, I actually want to tell this story um, mm. because, uh, like I said, th this has been a, a challenging project, project. And for me, the, the song that you may have listened to if you've listened to the trailer um, is something that uh, Justin actually uh, came up with. And I still remember walking down a... Sydney Street and listening to it um, in its, its, its first incarnation. And uh, ever since we recorded the song that we had that before we had the actual launch trailer, um, it's something that's really resonated with me um, as a lullaby, uh, because there are so many scary things in this real world um, and in the world of Eldrum with the dread. And you know, imagining a mother singing this uh, to their children, you know, a little bit as a boogeyman, um, but also just it's kind of like great life advice. Like it's really easy to let let fear uh, slip into what drives you, and um, yeah, I'm really excited to sort of sort of bring some <laughs> ideally hope into the world um, as we all sort of fight against uh, the dread, both in real life. Uh, in in Elderum itself, um, yeah, and, and maybe I just yeah, also kind of want to jump in a little bit and and take you through a little bit about part of our journey. So when we first started the project, I don't know if you guys remember this, but like the 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 GOG universe and the GU universe were not one universe; they were two separate IPs. And I remember sitting with Clay and with Ella and with Ryan and with uh, AMS and really kind of thinking through like, well, actually, these are actually part of the same world. And we wanted to start thinking about the Dread and about Elderim and about Yukos and about everything as kind of like one connected journey because we wanted to make sure that, you know, the, the, the Guild of Guardians story was part of sort of a larger story and has the potential to be a bigger story, to become a bigger IP, to allow us to build bigger experiences. So the song Hold Fast and the way that we sort of imagine Hold Fast, which is the trailer song. Um, and just for a little bit of context, like Ella and AMS and I actually drafted a lot of the words. We imagined it as a song that, you know, people in Elderim would sing to their children to kind of think about the dread. And if you think about the way lullabies work, right, like Ring Around the Rosie and, you know, those kinds of lullabies, many of those, like, lullabies or those, you know, children's songs were actually about terrible things, right? Um, all about, like, you know, things about, like, death and about destruction, and they were warnings for children to make sure that they could protect themselves, right? Um, so Hold Fast in particular, we imagined this as a song that, like, you know, Leah's mother would sing to her, which was actually a warning about the dread and a warning about this incoming threat that's constantly coming in, in the world and in Elderim. And, you know, when we thought also about the production of it and the writing of it, we drafted the melodies in-house. Um, and then we actually ended up working with a company called Zvi, 2-W-E-I, um, I worked with them before at Riot. They did a bunch of Riot's music. They're amazing, right? And they were the ones who actually kind of helped us to take this idea of the song and really bring it back to life. Yeah, yeah, Ring Around the Rosie Sandro, exactly. Super creepy. Like, if you actually read the words about that, that song is actually about the Black Death. And so to a certain extent, we wanted Hold Fast, if you're actually paying attention to it, to be about the dread. It's this cute song, it has this thing, but it's haunting, right? And it's the song that... Mothers would sing to their children to kind of put them to sleep. And that is the opening for Guild of Guardians and the opening for the world of Eldrim that we, you know, are starting to bring you guys along on this journey. Can we go to the next page? Or Ella and AMS, do you guys have anything to add? Cool. So, I think plan, versus, 
Oh, no, sorry. Okay, Ella, go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying, I think you covered it all really well, so please continue. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so, I want to talk about the plan versus reality. And so, you know, I think it's, it's really funny, right? Like, you, you guys heard on the call about all the games that this collective team has worked on. I think between us, we have something like 40, 50 games under our belt of different sizes, different types, AAA, indie, et cetera, et cetera, right? One of the things that I think is sort of worth calling out here is that when you're making a video game, even if you have all of the funding and the team and the idea and you put together, you're assuming that it's going to be this super chill, super straight line from start to finish and that the thing that you started with at the beginning is what you come out with at the end. And the reality <laughs> is that as you go along the way, you end up finding that you have to make changes. There's things that go up. There's things that go down. There's, there's shifts and changes and stuff that you have to make. And the truth is, is that that's what it took for us to figure out when we were making Guild of Guardians, is that we had one idea that we started with. And the game that you have in front of you is the end result of that. I want to talk a little bit about why we made some of the changes that we did so that you guys have a really good perspective on what it is that we were trying to do here. You know, one of the things was, at first, Guild of Guardians was designed to be kind of like a game that was a primary screen game, like a game that you are playing in the same way that you're playing, like, say, you know, like Wild Rift, for example, is one of the games that I worked on, or Diablo Immortals or something like that. And I think a lot of people, in theory, were super, super excited about that experience. But what we were really thinking about is that we wanted this to be the next phase in the chapter of Eldrim's journey. We wanted it to be something that connected both GOG and GU, and we wanted it to actually reflect the busy lives that our players actually have. And so like so many of you we know have many, many primary screen games that you play, whether that's on console, on desktop, you know, you know, phone, et cetera, et cetera, games that take up your full attention. But we wanted GOG to be a game that, you know, was a game that like you could play and you could learn about the story and you could collect your guardians and you could build them while, you know, in a bunch of different scenarios. So a game that you can play while you're queuing, a game that you can play while you're waiting for an Uber or Grab, a game that you could play while you're, you know, you're stuck on the couch watching a show that your partner has picked that you don't actually want to watch, a game that you can play while you're like really, you know, like you're taking care of your kids and you just have a free moment and you want a break, right? And as we learn more and more about the people who actually bought our NFTs, we realize that many, many of you have so, your lives are super, super busy. While you might have a couple of primary screen games, Quite a few of you don't have like a second screen game or so that game that fills that other time in your life. And we wanted to make sure that it could be a part of your lives every day, a game that would fit in with your lives and a game that really kind of, you know, could kind of fit in, right? And just be part and help you to kind of get along in this journey. The other thing, full disclosure, guys, um, you know, I was, I'm, I'm Filipino and American. I was born in the Philippines, but I went to school in the U.S. and then went back to the Philippines and my family's still in the Philippines. I, I, I wanted to also create a game that was based on games I love. And, and, you know, some of the games that I love, FGO, Fate Grand Order, right? Epic Seven, love Epic Seven, really love the idea of it, you know, squad collectibles and, and, and things that you can trade. And so we realized that that format actually is what we've ended up making. And, and we're very excited that you guys will actually get the chance to see it, especially as it evolves. Next page. Ella? Ella! Ella! <laughs> okay. I'm right. here, I'm here! <laughs> <laughs> Great, okay. So, just wanted to kind of walk you through, um, you know, the 15 months of this journey and sort of what we've done. First point, reminder, we started with a mine loader partnership. We started working with them in Shanghai. Our team, I, I think you might have noticed that a few of us who used to be very public, including myself, have not been, you know, in this channel a lot we haven't been sort of like traveling that much we haven't been at gdc that's because we wanted to make the best possible game for you and so we have been spending almost all of our travel time just going back and forth between sydney shanghai and singapore which is where the developers are that led us to beautiful quarter where we got to a game loop and we realized that we actually had something kind of magical in our hands i remember when clay and i were in shanghai we were playing you know, one of the iterations of the game loop. And I was like, oh, Clay, holy shit, this is it. This is probably the vibe, you know? Um, so we were actually really, really excited about that. 
And then that led to the, the limited beta, the regional test launch, and now where we are now, which is Global Launch Act 1. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we are thinking about launch over the next couple of phases, um, just so that you kind of know what to expect, right? Next page. Um, actually, let's, let's go back maybe just one page because I should probably spend a little bit more time talking about, actually, let's go to the next page, the page seven, because I think that that kind of leads in a little bit better, you know. Um, so the way that we're thinking about launch is essentially into three phases, right? And we're doing a bunch of different things in each of those phases. So the first phase that's starting for launch is today. The dread is here. Now you can start using your NFTs in games. You can start buying NFTs. You can start building up your squads. This is the chance for you to really kind of get in and start understanding the game. Um, notice we're not doing a Web3 sale until June 12th. That's because we want players to get the chance to actually play the game, get through the dungeon, start building their squad, figure out who needs to be inside the game, right? Act 2. Act 2 is when guilds come to life. That's June 26th. And that's when we start introducing all of the cooperative mechanics that I think many, many people are excited for. During this point in time, Guilds will come live. We'll have everyone kind of being able to do guild raids. There'll be guild crafting. There's a bunch of new features that'll come out, and we're going to do a big marketing push around that as well, right? And then finally, third is when divine beasts emerge, which is pets. And pets, I don't know about you, before I actually started an immutable, and part of why I got into immutable is because I got super excited about pets. I bought a Cadmus, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago now. Um, this is when pets come to life, right? Pets start to become the thing that will connect everything with your squads and guilds and start to kind of push. And then that's when we'll have another huge tentpole marketing moment, right? This way, at the end of these three acts, and the reason we're breaking into this way is to give people enough time to get familiarized with each of those different features along the way. So first phase, get good at your guardians, start building them up, get them ready for guilds. Second phase, get your guilds together, find your crew, find your squad, get ready to attack. Third phase, magical beasts, game on. And then those features are complete. And then we will start working through a new set of roadmap features after we've delivered on all of these three things. Next page. So launch cinematic trailer premiere. Wait, and just for a quick second, Ryan, are we going to play the trailer here? Or are we going to just let people click in? Um, I think we wanted to take a moment to let people click onto the link um, so they can yeah, go into YouTube. Okay. Okay. and watch it better on the quality. So what we can do um, is perhaps we just give like, wait a minute or two, um, let anyone who hasn't had a chance Although to people seem to want to play it. People yeah. seem to say like, oh, I want to play it. What we can do is actually, we could probably play it on our end and then also at the same time, in case it's not running as smoothly. Okay, okay, yes. Let, 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 let's do this. Let's do this, okay? We'll do both. We will play the trailer. Okay, yeah. I will tell, talk about the trailer for just two seconds, right? We'll put the video into the chat in case the quality is bad. And then after that, everyone can sort of choose. But just wanted to kind of talk about this trailer for just a second um, before we play it. Um, we wanted this trailer to be essentially a way to understand the world of Eldrim. And I told you the story of Holdfast. I told you the story of like how lullabies are actually warnings. And we wanted it to also be an introduction to the call of Eldrim. So what we did here with the trailer was essentially start with Leah remembering as she starts the call to start calling out each of the different guardians, but also remembering the song that her mother sang to her about the dread as she starts preparing for the fight against the dread. And so things that you'll start to notice here about the way that it's going, Leah starts the call, the magic of the six domains starts to come out, each of the domains starts calling very specific characters, and suddenly you start seeing magic starting flowing around the world and pulling everyone towards Eldarim. Right. So we see Tybor, we see Leah, we see Ashwin. We start seeing everyone coming to life and start coming together towards this great battle. And that's how this all opened. I highly suggest, by the way, click into the link and put up the music. You know, sometimes on these Discord things, it's hard to actually hear what's going on. We wanted this to be a full Sonic experience as well, to kind of be a starting point for you to understand this conflict that's starting to rage, but also to get an understanding that it's a conflict that's been going on for many, many years. Eldorim itself has some deep traumas that are put in. And then the big thing that we have inside there is Ariel, right? 
So this is when we start to look at the crossover between GU and GOG. We want to make all of those things into one universe, and we have some really exciting plans about how we're thinking about how GU and GOG will start working together and incorporate. Yeah, these salmons. It, it's aerial. It's ethereal. You know, Fries, by the way, I also uh, complained about the Leah nerf to uh, Clay, but then I actually like looked at the balance stuff of the mind loader team, and it turns out she's not actually that nerfed. So I feel a little bit less cranky about it, you know? Next. Yeah, well, you know, so sometimes, sometimes <laughs> Clay does the math. She was and... a little OP. She was totally OP, but like, she's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so Jack is so, still so very dope. dope. Theriel was this character from GU who was essentially a god in one of the in the light domain and fell from grace basically because he totally messed up the light world and became immortal and so like not immortal became amortal right and so one of the things that we wanted to signal especially to players who started with immutable and started learning about Yukos and Elderim through GU to suddenly start seeing how we're going to start thinking about this world of interoperability and starting to make the worlds cross over, both from a lore perspective and also thinking about NFT. Next page. If I can stop yep, in really quick, ahead. though, if you can go back just a couple really fast. Yep. Uh, uh, to the to to the logo slides, Ella. I just want to take a a moment. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, has been amazing about Guild of Guardians and getting the project out, you know, in the timeline we have is it took, you know, it did take a village, both, you know, internable, internal at Immutable, Immutable Games, Immutable Passport, Immutable ZKVM, uh, working with all of those internal teams, working with Mindletter in Shanghai on the primary game, working with, you know, Zombots on the altar, Superpower on Balance, Aria Tomato Farm, and others on um, uh, visuals, uh, Plastic Wax on the trailer, Alexander Swords on narrative, uh, and and Brunet Games and more on more narrative. Like there, there are so many pieces of the puzzle um, that had to come together, and uh, it really was just a fantastic experience working with all of these specialists and yeah, at Immutable basically being able to tie all of these people together to bring, you know, the product to life. Um, yeah, that's my little bit there. We can go on now. Sorry. <laughs> I think actually, Clay, while you're there, I was in managed, I managed to get Kang from Mindloader um, onto the stage. So Kang, do you want to try unmuting your mic and seeing if it, um, if it works? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to give yourself introduction, I think it's very fitting. We especially have Mindloader right up there on the screen. So yeah, um, if anyone who hasn't met you or might not know who you are, please feel free to give us an introduction, Kang. Yeah, we, Mindloader, um, happy to see you guys. And uh, we have been working with Play, Justin, and uh, all the Immutable team for more than one year on GOG. And uh, yeah, we are working hard to make this game great. Thank you, guys. Awesome. That's perfect. It's exactly what everyone had wanted to hear. Thanks for that, Kang. Okay. Guys, just because we're running a little bit short on time, let's move on a little bit and get to the... Yep. Sounds good. Sounds good. Also, guys, Kang, Kang is, is, is the best. He's really the best. He's amazing. He way too much time. Next to slide. <laughs> no, next slide. So you guys have seen the trailer. Next You've seen slide. the cinematic premiere. Next page. I think we're about to move into the AMA section. Next page. Uh, is it gonna... It's not as easy to drive as it looks. Please just give me a moment, team. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Because I, I, I actually think that the next page is when we start going into um, any questions that the team has in the AMA. We have some other slides that we can tell you about the world that we're creating and the franchise that we're trying to build. But maybe first we could start and see if there's any questions from the audience when we get into the next set of slides. Um, and I will pass it over to Ryan to help moderate questions. So what questions does the community have? Perfect, so I think we have some pre-arranged um, questions that we did take from the channel we had to open earlier on the presentation, but I think we'll take some live questions um, while we're here. So a question from Jayhawk. 
when will purchase issues be resolved? Um, so I think that's definitely an important question for us to try and answer, to, answer for people. Um, so Clay or Justin, do we have any idea of like when some of these purchase issues that some people really want to spend their hard-earned money on, on our game, when we can get that solved? Yeah, we, right now we are actually going through all of the major flows to kind of test. And I just want to clarify the purchase issues are around the credit card or around being able to use, uh, being able to use like crypto or ether. Uh, maybe in the chat, I'm just kind of kind of check because that also helps us, right? We've seen we so I'll tell you what we've seen. We've seen that there's a couple of issues with people being able to kind of get through KYC when they're trying to purchase. We've also seen some issues with people transferring some stuff over. And we've also seen some issues with people with credit cards. Um, we're putting together a bunch of FAQs around that because some of that is user error and some of that is helpful. And then, But then there's also some actual technical issues that we're working through. So if you have them, you just put them into the chat. Our team is going to be working, you know, over the next couple of days, like 24 hours a day to get this all resolved. Awesome. Thanks for that, Justin. Um, we have a more fun question here by Corin Dumcat. Uh, did you have a favorite part of creating the game? Um, do, do I get to answer this question? Maybe, maybe I'll answer the question first. Um, okay, <laughs> sounds good. I really love the lore part. I don't know, like LOMS, like I, I don't know about you, but like one of the things that I've really loved about working at Immutable and getting to spend more time working on a new franchise is that, you know, it's it, like part of what's so exciting about making a video game is building a world. And I think when we first started, you know, we had this idea of domains and we had the idea of guardians and we had this idea kind of, but it wasn't really kind of firmed up around how magic has worked. And like, I cannot credit Ella and AMS enough in terms of really helping to solidify the dread, the guardians, the domains, domain magic, thinking through sort of what is actually happening with Elderim. Like, what is Elderim? Like, for example, like Elderim for a while was just this like mythical place. And we started talking about Elderim as actually Elderim is this, you know, god that has basically chained itself to Yukos. Um, you know, in a, in, a, in, in a way to try to save Yukos from itself. And that, you know, part of what the dread is, is actually a natural phenomenon. Um, that, we're not meant to be talking about this, just as a heads up. This is mad spoiler territory. <laughs> but, but needless to say, needless to say, guys, needless to say, maybe, maybe I'll just sort of like put this in. This yeah, side. maybe just um, like, feel free to talk about the game and maybe not the law, because <laughs> we can touch on that. Okay, I just got spanked really hard, guys. Uh, this is sometimes why they don't let me go on AMAs, because I talk too much about things I'm not allowed to talk to. But one of the things that I wanted to sort of highlight is that we have very big ambitions for Elderim and for this franchise, right? And I came from a company where, you know, I don't know if, how many of you play League of Legends on here, right? But League did not have the tightest lore at the very beginning, and now has some of the tightest lore in the world. And there's a lot of different experiences that are tied to that lore. And so for me, at least, part of what was so awesome and so fun about this project was solidifying the rules of Yukos, solidifying the rules of Elderim, and then setting up in a way that when we start making our new games and start building out the franchise, that those things can be consistent and feel real and feel familiar to players. So um, I'm going to shut up now because I can already feel Ella being like, don't share the secrets. Um, but we're very, very excited about at least I was very excited, and it was one of the gratifying things to work through the lore of the world. Awesome. Thanks for that, Justin. Although, I don't know how the creative team is feeling about that regarding the I can the feel the rage. I can feel the rage emanating through Discord. Yeah, and I, I think th this is actually one of those slides where if we went into the full depth of it, uh, this is almost a, an AMA on its own. I think we might have to save this one. <laughs> Um, just with the, the time we have left. That's totally fair. We can know, also maybe... at the end because if people want and we do have the time, I'm happy to run through how our guardians are created and I've actually got a bunch of images. Awesome. So should we keep going through the presentation <laughs> or do you guys think we should um, take a few more live questions in the community? Uh, let's go through the presentation and then move over to live questions. All right. That sounds good. We have a lot of content to cover for sure. I will be quick, I promise. I just want to show you all a little bit of a peek behind the curtains when it comes to designing our guardians. So we're just going to go through some stuff. 
So this is for an upcoming Epic Guardian. Her name is Liska. I think she's going to be super cute. And we always start with a brief. So our briefs change in complexity based on what we need to be designing. So our legendary briefs are quite a bit longer and more detailed. And then the ones that are even more detailed, again, are our boss briefs because those are bigger monsters, creatures, and a lot more detail needs to be put into them. So this would be a pretty standard Epic brief. It'll usually be one to two slides with some information some rough references and just some dot points. And then from there we go to concepting. And this is what we do with MindLoader. So we'll send through the briefs and then MindLoader will go through them and start iterating on the design. And we'll have a few different options to choose from. This is where we collaborate, suggest changes, color schemes, etc. As you can see, I've got a little color palette here and you can see the color palette that's also on the brief as well. And then we settle on a design and we get that finalized concept art, which is the one to the bottom right here, where you can see Liska facing you front on, from the side and from the back, as well as her color render. From there, we go into modeling and animation. So this is when we also do feedback rounds to make sure that everything's looking the way that it needs to look. And then we do idle animations. And from idle animations, we go into, of course, all of the attack animations and things like that. Now, for some reason, it's having some trouble going between slides, but here we go. Once that is all done, so we have our model done, we've got our animation, we've got our concept art, we then go to our art outsources and we get a 2D portrait done. So this is really where we have a lot of back and forth because it can be a little bit tricky to go from something that is that chibi form into something that's a little bit more high fidelity and more normal proportions. And we'll go through several rounds in the sketching phase. We'll look at anatomy, we'll look at colors, we'll look at everything like that. And then we'll start going into obviously like your painting and then we'll do a final pass where all the last details go in. So this is the 2D portrait for Lisco, which I think turned out really well. I think she's a really cool character with a good design and you might see her in the story in the future. Who knows? Ooh. And that's pretty much the process. So it's a few different steps and we go through those steps with different people. but. That's also happened for every single Guardian that you see in the game because we had to update every Guardian's model and we had to make 2D portraits for all of the existing Guardians as well. So it's been a huge undertaking, but it's also been quite exciting. That's it from me. So, so feel free, anyone that wants to jump in and take over, go for it. Any other Excellent. questions for folks? Yeah, okay, next slide. Let's do the next slide. Yeah, we're just going through the presentation um, before taking... I can take this one. Um, so there was a question on what's planned for the future besides X milestones. Is there any other features that um, we're actually pushing in? Uh, so we have a very, very full live ops calendar for the game moving forward. Um, we're not going to get into a lot of detail on what those features are. I'm sure we'll be sharing more along the way, but to give you guys a high level, uh, we've got guilds um, or progressive features that would be coming out for the guild. So in version 1.5, we've got um, gameplay affecting uh, abilities that will be bestowed upon guild members and, the, the, and this will be unlocked by improving the guild level. Um, we're also going to get we also going to get guild quests in, um, which will have objectives for guild members to complete, to earn rewards and improve their guild level. And then, uh, in V two, we are going to have guild rates where guild members will be able to collaborate, uh, async so that they can defeat a powerful opponent, earn some rare rewards there. We're also going to get leaderboards, crafting, uh, auction, uh, and some exciting new features for version three as well. Uh, we're also going to get avatars. Uh, I'm not going to share much about this, but there will be uh, an ability for you to uh, actually pick um, your own PFPs as avatars in-game. Uh, and then in the future, once we once we add in pets, uh, in version 1, um, there will be uh, passive skills that improve the, the, the player's efficiency in some way, so increase re rewards, etc. In version 2, we'll have uh, gacha systems, pet merge, battle skills, guild functions, etc. Um, I'm not, not going to spill the beans on that last one there. Uh, we are going to be building a uh, new world. And uh, just to give you a little bit of a hint, it's going to be something I see. That's all for me.
Awesome. Thanks for that, um, Priya. I think the future roadmap looks really exciting for everyone. Um, I think also just to um, you know, be, to pay attention to the time as well, since we kind of ran over. Um, I think Justin, do you want do you want to do, you want to do like a community? Can we move on to the next slide. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to go into the next slide. Thank you, um, Justin. I think we will probably want to wrap things up here. Did you want to take a bit of a temperature check to see? Um, well, how much I just want to do a quick temperature check. I know we're running way over time, so what I would think what we'll do is we'll just kind of very quickly go through some of the uh, like like we'll skip some of the slides and then do another AMA. But there's like two parts that I really kind of want to get to at the end of this. Um, mm -hmm. awesome. and so like, I think Ryan, maybe we should move to those two parts and then schedule another thing kind of to go through into all of the live ops, right? Awesome. Sounds perfect. Um, in that case, I guess we can go right down to the giveaway Ella. So, um, if you just want to skip down some slides Ella till we get to the giveaway giveaway time. Yep. So this is... So a recent campaign that we held on Gleam. So we have the winners um, on screen now. So if you want to fall to the next slide, Ella. Those are the winning entries at the bottom right. So if you guys are in the stage channel right now, please, please give us your wallet address. Um, you can send me a DM and congratulations to everyone. <laughs> congratulations to all of the winners. Super excited. We're so excited that for all the people that entered. Amazing. Esport Guardians coming your way. Yep. Oh, man. I need to get my Esport Guardians. Ah. <laughs> Maybe you should have uh, entered, in, entered Justin. <laughs> also, yeah. Next well, if I won, everyone would be like, oh, rigged. So, you know, I have to just <laughs> buy them myself. You know? Inside I, I was tempted. I was tempted. I'm like, no, I won't. Yeah, no, we can't. We can't. We, Clay, we're not allowed to. Cannot. Okay. Yeah, awesome. And then this slide, speak to it very quickly. Um, this is a bit of my farewell. Unfortunately, my last day at Mutable will be on May 17th uh, this week. So, uh, you know, thanks everyone for all the support and the time um, you gave to the project and also me while I was here. So, yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. And you're in safe hands with the GOG team in the future. And, and guys, I just want to tell you, Ryan has been a fucking legend and has been the best. And from my me personally, I'm so excited to see what he does next. I'm so grateful for everything that he's done for GOG and the community. Um, and if you guys could just put some love in the Discord, I think it would be really, really great because like uh, we're, we're, we're you know sad to see him go, but he's going on to bigger and to better things, and it's 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 pretty awesome. Last thing, guys. So I know there's a bunch of other slides that we missed in here. We will schedule another AMA to go in there. But honestly, the best thing to do right now is for you guys to play, get into the game, start running around, let us know if there's any problems, let us know the things that you love. And, you know, the one thing that I would love to see is screenshots of your squads that you guys make, because I personally just want to see how people are doing the team compositions. Um, when you get your squad up and you're like you have a super dope squad, please post it into the channel for swag. I, I'm gonna look at all of them. I'm really excited about them, um, and I can't wait. So, thanks for joining the AMA. We are so excited about launch. We're so excited that all of you have been on this journey with us, and we're very very excited to continue. So, thanks everybody. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Thanks everybody, and. Uh... Yes, we will be continuing in the Discord. Uh, we've got some emergent issues that uh, we are looking at, and we will be fixing them throughout the day and the rest of the week. Sweet. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Bye. team.